This is a living tribute of the town of Hyman, PA by Harry Hensky Ritchie, who turns 99 this year. Having spent all those years in Hyman, PA, he was the perfect witness of Hyman's history. And it is through his eyes that we can tell Hyman's story. Well, I started out with young Hensky. And uh, games we played was, one was Hunter Gray Fox, when I was older, a little older, maybe 12 or 14 or whatever. A gang would be two groups. Uh, one group would be the fox, and their job was to hide, it was after dark, and they'd go and have to stay in a certain number of blocks, and you'd get, when you're ready, you'd holler, hunt the gray fox! That's how you hollered it. And then, uh, then the others were supposed to find you. And then if they didn't, and if they didn't find us, we'd holler, we said, not follow, holler, no, no, they'd yell, the ones that hunt you, holler, no, follow. And of course, uh, we sing that out at night, and we played till we, we quit. That was one game. But those two, baseball, track, of course, was just for school. And uh, but baseball, you can set, play all as long as you can play all when the weather will let you. And there were a couple of fields around. They maybe not baseball fields, but we made them into a baseball field. And uh, I heard the fire siren, and I went to the back window and looked out, and I could see the smoke. This, this was on the main street, Washington Street, and I could see the smoke coming out from one of the buildings. It was just smoke first, and then flames. All the flames were squirting as high as the ceiling, and uh, that was the beginning. That was about 5:30, I guess, in the evening or six, and then, of course, and then on. There was, I'd say. I forget how many fire companies came, but oh, many fire companies come. I, I heard one as far as Winchester. And because the street was narrow and it was so hot there, the men carried big ply, pieces of plywood. And they'd have someone would hold out in front of them and they'd be behind it fighting fire. Did you graduate from Hyman here? I graduated in 1936, right ahead of the flood. Now, St. Patrick's Day, that was the day of the flood in 19... 80 years ago on uh, uh, 36, that was the day of the flood, 80 years ago. I was carrying papers, I was a senior and I, I carried papers for about three years. And that morning, uh, well, we had a lot of snow that winter, a lot of, a lot of rain, a lot of rain there in the spring. And that's caused the flood again. Was there any hotels in Hyman? Four, three at least. One was next to the railroad, and there was two next to the railroad. Um, to the end of Market Street, on the left-hand side, was the uh, commercial hotel. And then up the street from it, on the same side, was the Wagner Hotel. And then across the street was the Algonquin. Let's see. They were going to, they, they had named it Bridgeport, New Bridgeport. Not, it wasn't, Bridgeport was across the bridge, and then they called the Hyman New Bridge because that's where people were building down there and the churches were down there and the schools down there. So it was New Bridgeport. And, and then uh, uh, Edward K. Hyman was the president of the Pittsburgh and Collinsville Railroad. And through his efforts, Hyman got a train to start with. We got this railroad come through here. And people were so, well, they just, had so much affection for him that they thought they were going to call it Hyman in his honor, and he was honored. So uh, they did that. They uh, petitioned the court to change it to Hyman, and they named it that. And then uh, he said uh, he was so honored they did it. He was going to establish a, a station here, and passenger trains would stop here. And of course, that was wonderful too, because before they just went through. So it's been Hyman ever since. And it was named for Edward K. Hyman, and his folks came from uh, Ireland. We were privileged to hear his story firsthand. Directed and produced by After Three Students.